If Christianity is going to make a real effect in the world, Christians need to stand together respecting, loving, and understanding one another. One of the most important parts of our love for Jesus is that we who love Jesus respect one another. And we know that there's a lot of division. There are people that believe in the Bible saying this, and some people believe the Bible saying that. And there are traditions that develop that can cause a great deal of separation among Christians. And the problem is that that separation then becomes an indication of who Jesus is. And that Jesus becomes a person that no one wants to be attracted to. And so really, this program with this wonderful lady, Dr. Ruth, Dr. Ruth, God bless you, we're here together to try to understand, if we can, some of the misconceptions and kind of clarify what goes on between a Protestant perspective and a Catholic perspective. Uh, your, your background is that of being a Protestant uh, minister. You're, you're also a person who's an author and also a doctor who's being able to take care of people in many of their health concerns. Tell us a little bit about that doctor health concern before we get into our issues. What, 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 when, you, when the people come to you as, as a doctor, why are they coming to you? Well, um, I'm a doctor of preventive care or lifestyle medicine. I also am a family medicine nurse practitioner. So my practice is integrative medicine. I approach uh, patients' care from a holistic perspective. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I um, am curious about their souls, about their spirits, and about their physical health. Excellent. So when they come to me with health problems, I, I always um, try to discern a spiritual need, and being a minister, I attempt to minister so to them the if they are willing and open. Yeah. Well, what about this question? We, we're, we're doing kind of a series of programs now, trying to understand how we can start to make bridges between yeah. the Protestant reality and the, and the Catholic reality yeah. and see if we can get some clarity. Have you got some questions for me that maybe I could try to wrestle with? Yes. The last time we talked about righteousness and being justified by the blood of Jesus, and we are, as Christians, those who, uh, who have uh, placed their faith in Jesus have been justified. and made righteous, we are in right standing with God. Amen. And being justified, made as if we have never sinned, we have been granted direct access to the throne of God Amen. in the name of Jesus. So today we, we will talk, I have some questions about prayer. Good. Uh, prayer is one of the most essential aspects of being a Christian. Talking to God. We've got to talk God. to God. And Jesus said in John 16 that we should pray in his name. And the Bible teaches that all authority and power is in the name of Jesus because Amen. all authority has been given to him. And as Protestants, we take that seriously. We pray in the name of Jesus because yes. we believe by faith based on his teachings and the teachings of the Bible that he intercedes for us. Yes. However, in Catholicism, <clears throat> my understanding is that the Catholics pray in the name of Mary. And the Bible does not teach that there is power and authority in that name. So help me to understand why is that, and the audience to understand. Well, one, one of the most important statements that I, I should make is this, to kind of get the ground going. is Mary is nothing without Jesus. And I know that sounds almost devastating to some Catholics because oftentimes they place a great deal of importance on Mary. But Mary is nothing without, without Jesus. Mary is a creature of God. She's a person who has been deeply blessed by God. And Correct. we find that in the Magnificat as she yeah. proclaims in humility, yeah. my soul glorifies the Lord. But Mary is nothing without, without Jesus. And as we, as we look at the, the liturgies of the church, um, every, every prayer that we make during Mass ends with, through our Lord 
Jesus Christ. Okay. And at the end of the long Eucharistic prayer, which is the, it's the, um, it's the second part of the Mass, after we've listened to the, to the Bible, we then remember the fact of the body and blood of Jesus. There's a long, beautiful, ancient prayer that is said, and it ends through him, with him, and in him clarifying in a strong way okay. to do, do that. So um, our understanding, the, the problem with, with Mary, I think, in the eyes of many Protestants is this, that somehow uh, Mary is not living. And for us, those who have died, those who have died in the Lord are alive. Mm -hmm. Their souls, their spirits are alive with the Lord. You know, and this is a very fundamental thing. And I believe also that there's a real bond of in intercession in our life that's very important. For example, we hear in Paul, him saying at the end of his epistles, please pray for me, you know? mm -hmm. please intercede for me, who mm -hmm. intercede not with Mary, <laughs> yeah. intercede with Jesus, pray with Jesus. And so the whole idea of a family and a church community interacting with one another, praying for one another. I have no problem of coming to you and saying, oh, Dr. Ruth, would you pray for me, please? And, and I can believe that God will, will, will honor that prayer yes. and bless me in a neat way. Um, but in no way do we ever pray in the name of Jesus, of Mary. Okay. It, it, Mary, Mary is nothing without Jesus. Correct. But we do give a great honor to Mary as we find, especially in the Gospels of Matthew, uh, the Gospel of Luke, even more, mm -hmm. and even in the Gospel of John, mm -hmm. that Mary has been given a place of great honor and respect. She, yes. is, she is the mother of the Messiah. Very blessed woman. B blessed woman, and we honor that. And we believe that she's alive, just as I believe my mom and dad are alive now, even though they've died physically. I agree. And I have no problem of, of, of believing that now, in the, that the love my mom and dad have had for me it's not something that's over, it's not dead, but it's very much alive. And I can see them going to Jesus and saying, hey, take care of Father Mike, will you? He's got this interview in the morning and he needs some help, you know, he needs what he yeah. does. So that they intercede with Jesus and Jesus is the center of our life and our spirituality. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's how I want to respond to you. There's, there's problems mm -hmm. and, and when we go back to the, to the Reformation, Whoa, there were some real problems that were going on with Luther and with many of the people of the Reformation because they saw this overriding devotion to Mary mm -hmm. and seeming to forget the Bible mm -hmm. and seeming to forget the place of Jesus. And so there's been a struggle yeah. and, and, and I'm, I'm proud to say that in, in recent uh, documents like the Second Vatican Council, we're coming down to the balance and really understanding the center of Jesus in what we're doing. So, I understand yeah. the problem, and I know that oftentimes we give a, a misconception, but the bottom line of a Catholic's belief is Jesus is our one intercessor. Amen. So we, like you said so nicely, thank you for explaining that. We have to elevate Jesus. Amen. Amen. Not Mary. We Amen. have to elevate Amen. Jesus. And Mary, Mary, and, and Mary is a blessed woman. And yeah. I love her for carrying in her womb my Messiah. Amen. Amen. But I will not elevate her. I will elevate Jesus. I respect Mary. Amen. And I respect think that, honor. wow, There's I no just appreciate her faith. The divinity. Yeah, yeah. Her faith and everything. And, and just, she's blessed. One of the, one of the interesting and, mm -hmm. things about Mary is the, uh, just the little, little story of the wedding feast at Cana. Mm-hmm. Um, they're at a big wedding feast and all of a sudden they discover there isn't enough wine, you know? And Mary goes to Jesus and mm -hmm. says, would you straighten this out? Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of sets the tone of what it means for a Catholic. Uh, we, can you go to Jesus directly? Of course you can go to Jesus directly. But there, there seems to be a beautiful relationship of family for us that can make us, make us love God even more in a beautiful family experience. And that's how... The Catholics interpret the scripture yes. because to us that does not uh, it's not a directive to pray in the name of Mary. That's just how oh, you guys it, interpret not, nothing, that. Nothing in the, we never yeah. pray in the name of Mary. Yeah, or yeah. to elevate Mary above Jesus. But I have a no, question no, for correct, you. Correct, correct, I'm, correct. I'm glad that you, you mentioned that uh, in a dialogue with a Catholic 90% of their discussion is Mary not Jesus and 
here's the question I have. Why can't they just go to God directly in the name of Jesus? Why is there a need to go through Mary? The veil has been torn That's and we fine. have direct access to Jesus. Jesus hears our prayer. He will intercede for us. And is there a need though to go through the back door? Because it appears to me as if God wants us to communicate with him. Amen. Prayer is a, um, it's a dialogue. It's Amen. not a monologue. I talk to God from my heart and I listen to God and I respond and God just loves a relationship at the heart level. God wants us to be free to come to him directly and Jesus is interceding for us. The concern I have though, why go through Mary first? Does that reveal a deficiency in the relationship? Or, or I'm not sure, help me. I think it, it can, I think, yeah, I think it could, yeah. I agree with you. I think uh, it could be it, a lack of trust. It could be a lack of lack trust. Lack of trust, a deficiency uh, in the relationship. And I'm, I'm going to agree with you yeah. and, and we got to be careful. We got exactly. to be careful with that. I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah. Very much so. I yeah. think that's very, very important that there should never be any, any lessening of the power of Jesus because, well, we've got to go through Through Mary. Mary. It's about oh, educating the lay person because yeah. a lot of the Catholics I talk to in my ministry, they don't have that revelation that it's okay to go to God directly. Precisely. You don't need Mary. So I think as um, co-workers of God, we are here to educate people Amen. that God loves us. He wants us to come directly to Him. He will honor our prayers. We can just talk to Him freely from our hearts. And, and we're going to take a break, but in the humility of Mary, I can never imagine someone yeah. coming and Mary coming up and saying, would you please talk to me and forget about my son? That would be foolish. The, the orientation of Mary is, no, no, go in humility, go, go, to, to, my, Jesus. go to my son, go, go to, to my Jesus. son. Yeah. That's the one that I'm Good, concerned exactly. about. Stay tuned, we're coming back with more. One of the most charming aspects of Jesus was that not only did he heal people, not only did he walk on water, but Matthew and Mark say that whenever he was talking to a large group of people, maybe thousands of people, he only told stories. I love that because thinking of Jesus as a master storyteller is so intriguing. And I've written a book about the parables of Jesus. The book is called 15 Faces of God. I go through 15 parables, uh, the exciting ones, and then I show how Jesus is saying in this magnificent love that he has for his Father, this is who my Father is. So as you listen, you're going to hear various, various faces of God searching humble, listening, celebrating, loving, forgiving, proud, and even optimistic. I want you to have this book. We're going to be giving you a special offer. For $10, you're going to be able to have this book. This will be a great way for you to help our television ministry and also find a wonderful way of understanding how Jesus uses these magnificent stories as opening the door for us to know who God the Father is. So please, a $10 donation or $10 or more if you can, to allow yourself to be enriched and to also bless this ministry, this television ministry, which is continually needing your prayers but also needing your financial support. Please, make sure you get this book. We've made a point uh, in our conversation that it's really important to make sure that Jesus is the center of our spirituality. Jesus yes. is the center of our prayers. Yes. And I'm conceding to you uh, the, that with, with great confidence that that's really where a Catholic mm -hmm. stands. Amen. But, but you got any Amen. more questions? Yes, come on and come now, at me. <laughs> yeah. Talking again about prayer, praying to the saints. Yes. The Bible teaches that all of, all of us are who are New Testament believers, 
are considered saints of God. Amen. And a saint is really someone who, who has put their faith in Jesus and uh, we are set apart, sanctified for God's use. So all New Testament believers are saints in God's eyes because he sees us through Jesus. But in Catholicism, my understanding is that saints are certain people who, who've attained certain standards, Talk oh, to me about so there's that. A distinction yeah, between, there's a distinction. And, yeah, okay. But that's not what the Bible teaches. Uh, as a Christian, we are saints because we are all set apart. And uh, God sees us through the eyes of Jesus. He loves us, us equally. And, and sees us yeah. as holy, as yeah. set apart, as co laborers to do His good works. I agree with you. And why do you pray to the saints? You know what it is? I, I, in, in my way, there are certain people who just kind of stand out, helping us some ways at being outstanding. I agree with you completely that we need to see the holiness of all the body of Christ. You know, the saint, but, but, but the saintliness but, but, but of But do you agree that, that all New Testament uh, believers are saints? Yes, of God? Yeah, we, we you, can, you, we, you yes, accept you know, that. I can, I can be Very good. The, this, and and we, have a, we have a celebration in the Catholic Church, All Saints Day. Okay. Which remembers all of those that died, but also remembers, and we turn to one another and we say, Happy Feast Day. Yeah. You know, because you're a saint, we turn to one another now and yes. say that because of this, the holiness. The Holy Spirit has come to us in the gift of baptism. Yes. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. Yes. My gosh. We are set apart. That, that, that sets yes. the holiness and, and the, the level of holiness mm -hmm. that we have. But there are certain, certain people that seem to have kind of stood out in a good way that can, mm, when we study their lives a little bit more in detail, they can encourage us to be able to be better in our, our response to God. Okay. For example, um, I had the great honor of being able to um, spend three days with Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Mm. Yeah. And now we know that in, in, a, in a few months she's going to be made a saint, you know, like this. Well, Mother Teresa was a, an exceptional person of the body of Christ, an agree. exceptional person. Totally agree. And so what we do is we just kind of say, hey, wait a minute, let's look at this hero. Let's look at this person that has shown great courage and strength and the real honor of what it means mm -hmm. to care for the dying, yes. to care for the forgotten and yes. whatnot. So what we do is we raise just certain people, not to say that, that we're not all, all saints, yes. but this is going to help me a lot. This mm -hmm. is going to help me to be a little bit more concerned with the homeless people that are living on my on my doorstep, mm -hmm. or to care for people that are immigrants that uh, yeah. you know, maybe I want to forget. Why not raise certain people that stand out in my mind and say, "Oh yeah, that was a good example." Based on their works for God. On their works, yeah, yeah. what they've done and what, how they manifested their. True. Things, yeah. Well, it's true that some people manifest more of God, yeah. but the question is, why do you pray to the saints? Do you Catholics pray to the saints that have died? Is that right? Same thing with regard to Mary. Okay. Same thing. We believe okay. we believe that they're alive. Oh, okay. So I, I'm, and we can talk. I mentioned to you mm -hmm, my mm -hmm. mother and father. Um, they're not saints of the church and a thing, but at the same time, I believe mom and dad are alive. Their souls and their spirits, following what Paul said about Thessalonians, uh -huh. uh, body, soul, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And I believe that they're alive. And I believe that, I really believe that love doesn't die. It does not die. And a Christian really does not die. I don't like to use that word in my teaching. No, I, no. I, I believe based on the teaching of Paul in uh, Thessalonians, Christians fall asleep and we are transitioned into eternity. We really don't die, we are alive. So the spirit is alive, the soul is alive, transformed uh, in the image of God. So I agree with you, and love never dies, like Paul teaches us in Romans, I think, uh, chapter 8. So are you saying that you pray to the saints because you believe that they can intercede on your behalf? With Jesus. With Jesus? They, they talk to Jesus. But we're getting back to the same question yeah. that we had yeah. with regard to Mary. We've got to make sure yeah. that we don't make... Saint Anthony or Saint this or Saint that more important than the the access we should have to mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's the center of our life. But uh, there's a beautiful bond. And again, bringing in the thought of Paul, yes. um, 
He, uh, in one of his letters, he talks about praying for a certain man who had passed away, you know, praying for that and this union that is alive there. Eh, that, can be a, that can be a way of enhancing the family experience of my love of God and coming closer to Jesus. I think my understanding of that scripture was Paul was asking for his friends in ministry to intercede for him and not for someone who has died. But that, that's my understanding. That's another topic, though. Yes. This is another topic about yeah. praying for the dead. Mm -hmm. But the idea of praying for saints who have passed away for me is a very wholesome way of okay. coming to God as a family. Just as Paul would pray at the end of his letters, ask for prayer of, of the course. family of the church yes. to pray and he for did, him. He did that a lot. And yeah. so I come and we have no problem of saying now those that have have died in their body mm -hmm. are now alive mm -hmm. and the bond of love continues it in does. a beautiful way. And so there's, we, we call it in the Catholic Church a thing called the communion of saints. Okay. Which is kind of interesting. Okay. So it's the, the saints on earth uh -huh. and the saints in heaven also. Uh -huh. and, and we're bonded in a beautiful way uh -huh. of a life and, and, and praising Jesus. Okay. But to be careful, again, now, just, yeah. as, just as we're concerned about Mary, that we don't put so much stress on this saint or that saint mm -hmm. that we forget the importance of coming to Jesus. And I think, I think that at the Reform Reformation, as you study that, you find that at the time that Luther was so concerned about mm -hmm what was going on in the church, there were things that were happening in the Catholic Church with saints that was not really healthy. There were, there were relics and there were, there were buying of certain things like that and it just completely out of proportion to the simple response that we need to give my life to Jesus. Yeah, I agree. So bottom line, you know, praying to the saints is the same concept as praying for Mary. We have to be careful to elevate Jesus and not the Number saints one. and not Mary. Precisely. And people precisely. have, uh, God has granted direct access to him through the name of precisely. Jesus. Precisely. We can do that. Let's not make prayer a religious activity. And that brings me to my next uh, topic, rosaries. Yes. Tell me about the rosaries. Because the rosary is an experience of meditation. Okay. What, it, what happens with my rosary, I say the rosary every day. What, what we do is we take the prayer, um, a prayer from the Bible, okay. the prayer of first of the angel Gabriel coming to, uh, to Mary and saying, mm -hmm. Hail Mary, full of grace, yes. the Lord is with you. And then yes. when she went to visit Elizabeth, Elizabeth looked up and said, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb and yes. we had Jesus. Well, what I find the rosary is, is like a, a meditation. It's like a, a symphony of of a repetition. Okay. It's not going against what Jesus has said, no, no, don't have long repetitious prayers, you know, like this. What this is, is just the repetition of certain phrases that lift me up, kind of like when I lift, listen to a symphony. Okay. Have you ever listened to Beethoven? Beethoven comes out and he, and with genius, he came up and he said, I'm going to create this great piece of music. So he sat down and he went, Boom, 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 boom. And everybody said, whoa, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But then he takes that little phrase and he goes, boom, 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 boom. And he all over. And when I'm sitting listening mm -hmm. to the symphony, all of a sudden my mind is lifted to a new level. And if I'm, I'm, if I'm willing to now meditate on the life of Jesus, mm -hmm. the repetition of those sounds of the Hail Mary, not every word, but just the repetition, becomes a beautiful lifting to something higher mm -hmm. and more blessed in my life. Mm -hmm. It's a meditation on the life of Jesus okay. using something from, taken from Scripture, but trying as best I can to, to come closer to God in my life. So it helps you to be centered. Oh, very much so. And to be but, focused well, and, and that, on that's Jesus. And the, the tactile thing here, mm -hmm. I, I, I touch these, you know, and this, this touching, mm -hmm. this helps me to be centered too. Mm -hmm. like this. But Jesus, and I think of the sorrowful mysteries, I think of his agony in the garden. Yeah. And what happens in my own practical life is not only do I think about those things of Jesus' life, but then I start relating those to things that are happening to me right now exactly. in my own life. And suddenly there's a perspective that's given. And that's what meditation is about. Yes, it is. It, 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 it's shaking us up out of the watching television and going in the car and doing all this. And we stop home, we stop. And we allow God to start to talk to us. And in that talking to us, mm, mm -hmm. I, I, I try to reach a deeper level. And this becomes an experience of that symphony of, of prayer, symphony of meditation mm -hmm. 
that I that for me has become a beautiful way of drawing me close to Jesus. Yeah, but do the Catholic practitioners know that though, or is it just another vain reputation to them? Oh, it can be. Which which is uh, fruitful and yeah. futile and it can be. It uh, can what be. Jesus sure. taught against. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and I, you got to watch out for it. Yeah, because yeah. very soon before you know it, you're just saying all this mantra and yeah, and, and hoping that that's going to be some that miracle gonna, or happen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to be coming back. Now listen, stay, stay tuned, will you? We want to pray with, for you and for some of the people that you want. Here we're talking about prayer. Stay tuned. We're going to be praying for you. One of the most charming aspects of Jesus was that he only told stories. I love that because Thinking of Jesus as a master storyteller is so intriguing. And I've written a book about the parables of Jesus. The book is called 15 Faces of God. I go through 15 parables, uh, the exciting ones, and then I show how Jesus is saying in this magnificent love that he has for his Father, I want you to have this book. We're going to be giving you a special offer for $10. You're going to be able to have this book. This will be a great way for you to help our television ministry, which is continually needing your prayers, but also needing your financial support. Please, make sure you get this book. of making sure that the rosary is not something which is, as you said, just a whole bunch of empty words that we say. Vain repetitions. But it's centering on Jesus, and this mm -hmm. is what we want to do. We got to make sure that being saints is also a process, because we're struggling with sin. Mm -hmm. and we're struggling with sin and struggling yes. to be what we want to be, yes. and yet the grace of God gives us the ability to move beyond our sins, mm -hmm. to find forgiveness and to find union mm -hmm. with God. So yes. centering on Jesus and then mm -hmm. That thought. I want to share with you and, and I want to pray with you um, for sharing some of these petitions. Jim from Illinois wants to pray for his himself and also for his sister who's doubting her salvation. Mm. Uh, Drain from Florida. She is a diabetic and she's, um, she was abused by her husband. Really, all these, these really serious things. Margaret from Illinois. Uh, the daughter-in-law, um, that she can keep her job as a teacher. Just practical things. Let's, let's pray. Put your hands right here on this, if you would. Lord, come into the lives of all of these loving people and bring about miracles, miracles of peace and healing and love. Mm -hmm. And may Jesus' love for you always make you smile.